Decorating Pages podcast presents Production Design Film Study. This class examines Oscar-nominated films spanning a century of cinema. Accomplished professionals in production design will explore and dissect the sets featured in these nominated films and will educate why they were recognized for the design of their time. This class features the films of 1929. This year's films will be reviewed by set decorator Kim Wanup and production designer Jamie Walker McCall. Let me ask you why, because I was really uh, like amazed that you went back so far in picking 1929. Why did you pick this year? I picked this year. First of all, what attracted me to it is the poster artwork. Oh, yes. I think being a graphic designer uh, uh, really attracted me to it. And I was like, wow, this looks really, really interesting and fun. And um, it's always a style that I really enjoy looking at and researching. So that's what first attracted me. And then, um, you know, I don't, I haven't gone back and watched this time period really very much. So that was the other thing that, that did. It's, it's really amazing what they did. Don't you think, I'm, are you blown away? Yeah. Like King of Jazz, I am blown away with the sets that the they King of Jazz was, it was amazing. I was blown away too. It was the first one I watched and yeah. I was like, oh, they could do that then? Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's what I kept thinking. But there's so many movies, like there is movies in like the 50s and 60s and I'm like, how did they get all these extras? How did they build all this? Like, I mean, I'm not trying to like downplay the the movie industry, but it is amazing to me. And and I think going back this far, it's fascinating of what they pulled off. Just beautiful stuff. Beautiful sets, massive. Yeah. I mean, sets are massive in all of them. Um, something that I really love that almost every single one of these movies had uh, was a lot of negative space, which I always yes. love so yes. much of, which is, I appreciate. Um, but yeah, it, what they did and the painted backdrops were amazing. And just the size and scope of the sets blew my mind. Yeah. So we have five films. We're going to go in alphabetical order. And um, oh, look, it's making a beep sound at me. It's not letting me go. Okay. Where's my cursor? Go. <laughs> So, um, a lot of these early films don't have set decorators. I'm sure there was a bunch of people on set, but it is the, um, the production designer, uh, given credit for this. And, um, God, is that, I have hands dire as this. I think my slide is wrong. <laughs> Did I have the wrong Good start, one? Kim. Yeah, great start to this one. I have hands, um, both, oh no, it's William Cameron Mendes. Yes, that is him. So this was filmed at Paramount Studios. Um, 500 extras were reportedly worked on this film in uh, late September 1929. And this became a series. Like, they, they did a bunch of sequels to this, but it's this is the first one. A bored uh, World War I veteran helps out a young woman whose uncle is being held hostage by embezzlers, which he's in, like, some hospital or whatever. But um, mm-hmm. now what's funny is without even talking to you, I also loved all of the graphic posters and set up slides, I think, for almost all of them of just how they did so many for each of them. It's I know. fantastic. It's I- so great. And um, I did see that when I was doing some research on it, that it did become like a series. And it kind of when you watch it, you're like, oh, yeah, this is definitely like kind of modern day. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes, uh, kind of, or like, yeah, exactly, detective. And, um, well, I it's I these are all screen grabs. Mm-hmm. It starts out there, you know, he's in some club or something. And, and as we were talking about, like, the scale, the scale of the these scale. rooms is fantastic. And this set is only in the movie for about two minutes, yeah. It, it the long walk that the um, yeah, the butler. <laughs> A butler or whatever he is makes um is is massive it's so crazy to me and then just with the the painted backdrops outside which is really fun yeah uh, and then this was another one that i noticed like super negative space the one on the on the right with the bookcase and everything they you know filled that one in but this one on the left is yeah. just so and people empty, the, even the furniture space fall apart like it's really like everybody's there just to be alone 
Mm-hmm. And then this guy comes along. And then they move to this little chateau, I feel like. I have an exterior shot of it somewhere. Wait, there. On the top left. Um, that's, I believe, the exterior of this place. I right. Think. I'm pretty sure. Okay. This is like a little tavern, right? Like a little Right, a tavern, tavern with rooms up above. Yeah. And I... They kept using this one angle of it, which made me think it didn't have, like, a fourth wall. Right, which I seem pretty common in all of yeah. the movies. Yeah. And, um, but giving it texture and shadow and, um, you know, it's sparsely decorated, but it gets across. Like, oh, it's a little, little town. Little this is ball. another set that I thought was really big for what it's supposed to be, like a, you know, British tavern. Yeah. Um, really high ceilings and in, in the door, you know, everything seemed much bigger than I guess realistically it would be. Um, but again, back in the day, I'm sure they had to accommodate for s- way more massive lighting. Yeah. Extra, you know, all that stuff to get it lit in cameras and all that stuff. But, <laughs> but it is, it's a really big set. It is funny because it doesn't look, and a lot of these, they don't look like they're wrong in being, uh, design so big like a lot mm-hmm. of times sometimes you can tell things are sets because the room's just too big like a hospital room or like whatever right like it doesn't feel like and then this is one of the rooms upstairs which is a it's it, this is one scene where she first comes in the room and the lights are off and then they turn the lights on I thought was fantastic also just mm-hmm. to to show that um the the lighting and how I mean, they their cameras were able to capture so much in the dark. I felt too. Yeah, this one this one looked really good. Yeah. Or the preservation of it. Yeah, the set the film altogether was preserved very well, I would say. And then here's the exteriors, which I tried to find where these were. The one on the left actually looks like that witch's house in, in Beverly Hills, but I know it's not. But it kind of looks like it. Yeah, or that one in West Hollywood, <laughs> the yeah. old like Snow White House or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's the yeah, so, yeah. See, like, um, it doesn't. Oh, filming locations. Oh, it's in London, in London and Hollywood is where they. So they went there for exteriors. Well, that's crazy. Mm, especially at that time. Yeah. Um. Uh, Lambeth, London, England, South Bank, Wester Bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, the bridge scene. And look at this. Look at the scale of this one. I know. I mean, the scale really has blown me away. And again, especially in some of the other films, when we get to those, the scale is massive. And I'm, I'm like, how long, how much time did they have for this? How much time did they have? And to light it and to... Mm-hmm. I mean, look, it's it's one settee right there. It's perfect, though. There's not even any sconces or anything in this place. Mm-hmm. But and I, did they have any change over time? Like, was this did this need to be changed over to something, or did they just own all the uh, stages? Yeah. Uh, and then, so they go to this like laboratory where the uncle's being <laughs> held, <laughs> like this Frankenstein sort of laboratory, which to me was too big like look at that door yeah. <laughs> look at that door yeah it's weirdly too big or something that seems to be a common theme throughout these movies is that the doors are massive and then all the handles i noticed are up by people's faces but that's so weird it was weird it's weird and uh-huh. but they this movie and 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 in a couple of them the use of shadow Mm-hmm. And what you're talking about of like negative space and being able to use those walls, like I thought it was fantastic and something that that isn't really done anymore. No, I agree. And there's a, a in the King of Jazz, there's a great use yeah. of shadows as well. Oh yeah, but yeah. So you never get to go into that's that big tall door from the previous one, but you never really go in this room. But they just show the action in shadow. I think they're like doping up the uncle or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, uh, I mean, like, that one, I don't even, is this a real building? How did they do this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm amazed by it. I don't know. 
Uh, I mean, that's a great question. I don't know. I don't know either. But the to get the camera up that you know it has to be a build. It has to be a build. It has to be a build because you got that camera up so high to get this angle into that room. Wait a minute. Let's go back into this room. So that is up and to the left. Is that the same room? Or I guess the shadow of the... No. The shadow of the window is on that back wall. So go to the next side again. Right? Or is that the fourth wall that we're looking at? It might be the fourth wall. Yeah. Well, yeah. So then that window should be up there. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just so dark we can't see it. Maybe it is. <clears throat> Can it, like, up here? Is that the window? It must be. It must be, right? They yeah. just don't show it. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, this, and then this, this weirdo staircase that they go to a couple times. But the design of it, aren't you fascinated with how they get the depth, but... Uh, there's just all these like zigzag walls yeah it's there's so many usage of like stairs even in the the room upstairs the first one when he's like oh where's the bedroom and then it goes he steps oh, yeah. down into the, the, this one the other room. i mean it's a great usage of staircase you know to get the shadows to make it feel bigger and Eerie. scarier yeah because at this point like they've kidnapped the young girl too i think I don't know. I was confused by the whole. <laughs> I was confused by, it, but uh, because they were trying to save the uncle, and then the guy had the girl. I don't know. But then they're in this attic scene, which again, the angles of this it's really hard to see in the black and white. But when you're watching it, it's it's a, there's a lot of angles to this tiny little room that they go upstairs and meet in. Mm -hmm. And then this Which is, is it's really fun because it, it's like make it work. It's visually cool. Yeah, and you get the brick, you get having the, the cinematographers have to make it work. Yeah, and the the texture of giving it some brick instead of the flat walls, and then this is like where the uncle's in the hospital, and it's just I don't know, they're keeping him in the basement or something with these stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but again. This is another build. This is, this is like yeah. the 10th or 12th build of this. I liked this just to show that like, they had some dress. They had some dressing in there in that mad scientist world. And that big light above them. It kind of looks like Vincent Price right now. Yeah. It really does. And then <laughs> this is a clear, this is a picture I found, not of the, not a screenshot, but there's that big tall door back there. And I mean, there's a bookshelf that nobody can reach. <laughs> <There's> like... <laughs> oh, in the beginning. Was... Yeah, when they go to collect their hats. Yeah. I really like the symmetry of how the hats were um, left and right flanking. But the <laughs> it was so tall. It I was, was like, so that tall. guy cannot reach the hats for sure. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I yeah. don't know. If it you can see it in that first, it's a great shot, and I, I'm it was it's really in a bedroom or scene. something. It's not in here, right? No, uh, it's at the gentleman's club. Oh, then yeah, I don't have that. But yeah, there's something about the scale of things is like a little off, and I'm wondering if that was on purpose, mm -hmm. just to dwarf the people and make everything a little scarier. But then I was also thinking, you know, back then people were like, what, average height? <laughs> Five, two. Right. <laughs> Is it normal now? And Oh, wait. Just... Bulldog. I totally read the wrong damn things for Bulldog. That's why. I was on Vagabond King. Okay. Um, never mind about those extras before. Um, <laughs> Menzies also did Gone with the Wind. Oh. Yeah. He directed oh. the famous burning of Atlanta sequence and the hospital sequence, including the famous long shot of the wounded and dying at Confederate oh, soldiers. he directed it. Yeah, taken from a 90-foot crane. I just think about that movie all, I mean, I it was like one of my favorite growing up. 
I think it's something that really is in the back of my mind and inspired me. Um, but I just think about now that I production design, if I were to read Atlanta Burns, <laughs> I'd be like, what? Especially back then, like, yeah. what the hell does that, what do we, what? Well, cool. I watch Gone with the Wind at least once or twice a year. It is my favorite film. And I constantly watch it because I'm in awe of what they did. I'm just mm-hmm. in awe of it. But um, there was a, I forget why I put this in here, but this scene, actually, there is there is a dolly shot that is very, like, probably one of the first times they did it where they pulled out really quickly mm-hmm. um, to intensify the the him with all these bottles and everything. Um, oh, so the stodgy gentleman's club shown in the beginning was a... British institution into the 21st century proper decorum is always expected of its members. So that was a, that couldn't have been a real place. No, that wasn't. I mean, maybe the exterior, but not the interior. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what that means. Okay. Now that I've got my (laughs) notes correct. (laughs) Um, I think the film overall is, I mean, I think of all of these movies, you're, I'm just in awe, like we said of, of what they did, but, um, very much gave a creepy vibe to the whole film they achieved in the design. Definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm glad I watched it. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have watched it otherwise. Wouldn't have watched it otherwise. Uh, well, here is the winner of the year, King of Jazz. American pre-code color film starring Paul Whiteman and his jazz orchestra. And... Um, Man, I, I'm blown away by. I this mean, film. I can see why it won. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. The yeah. sets are amazing. Um, Herman Ross, the production designer, won an Oscar for this. He was under contract at Universal from thirty to thirty-two, famously working on the set design for Frankenstein at the time, and he is also a costume designer. Um, he also did uh, the Vagabond King, uh, our mm-hmm. other film. So, um, I think he also did, uh, let me see how many credits he has as like a, sometimes you're like, oh, how many credits do they have? Oh, he doesn't have a ton. Sometimes like, cause they were the head of the studio, you know, the, mm-hmm. the production design, some designers, you know, in the forties and fifties have like 300 credits or something. It's like insane. I um, will say I definitely notice the connection between costume design and some of the sets like that wedding scene where all of the gowns gather up the staircase and like that had to have been some amazing coordination between the costume designer and the production designer to make that happen and now I understand why he did it (laughs) yeah I mean he there the costumes in this are phenomenal and all of this was all of this was done that it says here on stage 12 at Universal. I don't know how. Well, this one, I was really like, what were the changeover times? Because the sets are so massive. Yeah. So and massive. moving. They're moving around. They're intertwining They're moving around. With Again, another great um, example of painted backdrops used as walls. Yeah. I mean, uh, that book alone. The book alone. So the book is basically how the movie flows through these chapters, and goes and introduces some of the um, dancing and singing scenes, and the pages actually move, which is fantastic. And the graphic, the the the, the paintings on them and the graphics are all just beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I don't, uh, and you, I don't know how they did it. <laughs> <laughs> well this i was trying to trying to watch it but i think again because of the quality of the film i was like is this a it looked like draw you know it looked like a curtain or drop to me it didn't mm. look you know like a big hard substrate oh but. It, it's it's fascinating how he moves i mean they just start moving and then you're into the next chapter the, it starts out with a cartoon and i was like oh which i thought was i was thrown for a loop on that one yeah. I'm like what I was like I don't know what this is and then there are some little vignettes where people talk and I, I show some of these but like this guy has the 
the model of the set that we're going to see eventually, which is crazy. Like the, the model looks gorgeous. Just shoot the model. <laughs> the model looks amazing. But then when they had all the little people, I'm like, wait, how'd they do that back then? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Cause they start moving all of a sudden they start, he, they start he climbs out of the thing and yeah. Oh, yeah. This was the usage of shadow. Yeah. I, I think I have a really... better, I have a better thing of that coming up, but there, I think twice in the film they use shadow one with a dancer and one, uh, I think this one might be with a instrument, but yeah, it just, there's just phenomenal. Look at that. Like the, look at even, all that. Look at all that. The accordion, at, like painted screen mat but it's huge it's huge and this is simple but it's gorgeous it's really gorgeous and it's it i love going back and looking at these sort of things because it's something so simple that we could do now yeah. like just a you know duvetine bench that makes you then kind of look flow it's it's so pretty and so simple pretty. so pretty the all the costumes here that like play off of the darker color in the back that's all phenomenal this. The, choreography. the choreography this was so weird to me i was like what happened is she dead is she a ghost now oh, what's I, going on i didn't know i didn't know if there was a common thread through all of these little stories I or whatever know. i was just i i mean this is i was trying to figure out the connection but i don't think there is any i, I kind of felt like i was watching just like a variety show yes i think it's more that yeah but look at that wall they did with the drop painted drop oh, it's gorgeous so pretty and, and so, then just a couple set pieces so to accompany simple. yeah the 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 candelabras the table in the back which somehow has disappeared actually in that scene in the bottom <laughs> it's that table's not there but um and then the this is also when the the makeup was like it was frightening in this oh, when the wait, hand have... comes out and the, the makeup is like oh yeah oh that's the staircase that yeah. i was talking about with the bridesmaids and all their gowns it's fantastic it's, really it's i mean that's something taylor swift should be on she should get on <laughs> that <laughs> tay tay come on yeah tay tay get get with that look at that get all your dancers but look that's that staircase in the background again is a huge huge set yeah because look at the scale in the wall in front of that huge thing i know look how tiny she is walking down those steps yeah, and the costumes are fantastic for this little mm -hmm. vignette. Um, and then this is quickly on the screen, but I thought so fascinating because um, all of a sudden, like all of these set pieces just like pop up, like it's like one by one by one, and then right. and then she's typing and it's over. So this is like a quick set, no walls. I mean, so so quick, so and I also felt like a little futuristic and I felt like I, when I was watching this it was the the 50s exactly, exactly. I was I, I was kind of thrown I'm like wait a minute no this was in I just I was just about to say like it was like oh it's like a little mid-century-ish or like the 40s huh. with the tanker desks and I'm like wait right. this is 29 and you know like you don't have 1929 furniture you have like 1925 furniture or you know the decade right. um and then this, another use of shadow, just that sheer drape with the pattern on it, it looks like. Yep. Piano, this. So this, is this the Bing Crosby? He's in it. Bing Crosby's in there yeah. in this trio. I know, I saw that. Which is crazy. This was, I, this to me, that that painting was very Harry Potter. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I thought he was going to start singing and talking, and then I was going to be like, how did they do that? But... It's just like a film overlay, I think. Yeah, because this, that piano, so that wall is to the right. And right? And then he looks up at it. I forget if this is the same vignette or not. But all of a sudden. This is another, he painted this painting or whatever, and then they had the full set, which again, if it was just on stage 12, how many, I mean, this had to have shot for, how long did this shoot for? Um, let me look that up stage builds and the the changeover time it's and... shot from november to march that's it <laughs> i wonder how long prep they had <laughs> december january february march they, for four months they were shooting this i don't know and the choreography had, they, was oh, amazing the dance it was 
My slide I'm is sure in we'll the wrong place. One. My slide is in the wrong place. But these people are sitting there, and then the, the, they're sitting there, and then all of a sudden this rock turns. The whole thing turns, and then these other people come up, and it's a whole dance move. Like the turning yes. of sets is fantastic. And then it just keeps coming, right? This is also where the benches appear. Yeah. Which I thought was really weird. Oh, that's not it. That last one when he turns and he has like the little black girl with him. Yeah. Like what is happening? I don't know. Why is he alone at night on a bench with this little girl? <laughs> yeah, I think I have that coming up. It's weird. I don't know what was going on with that. This is very like a stage design like for theater mm -hmm. of just like turning it around and there's so many sets then look then they have this vignette of so this chick in the house and then and then they're back on that rock and then the, all the sailors are there oh I, this one was really funny because it was like oh so she's just kind of a whore yeah she's <laughs> just kind of <laughs> then the wall explodes i don't <laughs> i couldn't i I couldn't really tell you which vignette story went with which one at this point because there's so many sets. There are so many sets. I mean, I, they probably, granted, he should have, yes, this film should have won, but, like, based on just sheer amount of sets alone. Yeah. There and the diversity there of each one. Like, like this giant drone. Look at this. Six, there has to be, like, 60 sets or something at least. Yeah, this was a great dance that he does, mm -hmm. and it's all in the shadow, and they show him, and the blue, and and, and this is my favorite. This was insane. This is I, insane. <laughs> this... I, I built a giant piano with the, that's so big that there's an orchestra inside of it. And it turned, and, and, it, and that whole, you know, top comes up, and the little, and the people are in there. It's a gigantic build. How did Huge. they do it? <laughs> I don't, I, that's why I, they had to have been prepping this movie for a very long time. And look at the floor design even. It's gorgeous. And then, I mean, they, uh, they got like 30 people, 20, yeah, like 20. Look at all those, pro like those giant drums and, uh, yeah. And what's the budget on this? Do you have that? Um, I don't know. Two million. Uh, how much? Two million. That I believe at that at that point. Yeah, two million in nineteen twenty nine. Yeah. Can you imagine at that time being like your your budget's two million. Two million. I mean, that's a that's a lot of lettuce. But I can't. I, that piano is, and then yeah, and then the walkways that come off of it, and the dancers that go. It's just. And the, where is that? Is that just something, you know, like all of our stuff, like... It's gone, yeah. Get the chainsaw. Yeah. I mean, and the crystal, like, palm tree, where's that? Where's that <laughs> magnificent piece? It's not at Warner Brothers or Uni, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this, to me, was the best set. I mean, I know the finale is fantastic and everything, but this was yeah. phenomenal to me. And then they have the little version of it for this guy to play. It blew my mind. Yeah, this it whole, did. This whole thing. I am. I. I have told so many people about this movie. I, I mean, people. Everybody needs to watch it. Not. I. I think I'm going to send this movie to some of my choreographer friends because the ragdoll dance. Yes. Is incredible. Yeah. I mean, and this piano plays for a long time. I, it's not that I loved it and took a lot of pictures. This one uh this song keeps going and going and then they bring in these side pieces and that's all movable and even like the to me the top of the piano where those stripes are like they mm -hmm. even painted that while it's up like every detail of this is just fantastic and then this was boring mm. <laughs> that's why i mean it's just another set i want to show like look at these built these very different builds yeah little apartment vignette and then the hit donkey. every every like genre of <laughs> yeah like down skid row donkey yeah. and then this i mean how many this has been redone with the faces i feel mm -hmm. like many times but that's in 
Indiana Jones, isn't it? Yeah, and they're just singing, singing heads. And then there's the Bing Crosby, which I just like the pop of color, at least, you know. I don't, I, I don't. This was fantastic. This is a model. <laughs> right? This whole thing is a model. I would assume so, but I don't, is this, I don't know, is this like some sort of film overlay, like where it's a shot of Dad, downtown, downtown and then they overlay the people running through it? Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I mean, it only has a location of Universal Studios Stage 12. I don't know. Well, um, yeah. I mean, it's a hell of a lot of detail on a model. It's crazy. I mean, the lights are on, the neon's on. How do they get neon? I feel like small? this is some sort of like Trick. film overlaying situation. I believe you. Because I can't believe, I don't know. <laughs> I can't believe that they did it. <laughs> um, again, I mean, I was thinking about how many casters they must have had on the show because everything, everything is wheeled away and goes well, in and goes around. And... You know, I don't, I don't have the video here, but they're dancing and then all of a sudden this this rolling stage parted in two comes up from behind them and then the orchestra is behind them. It's fantastic. And then there's another cartoon and then these two. Oh, this one, she's super aggressive in this. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, I, didn't, I was like, is that? I don't. I, really, really aggressive. <laughs> you know, I kept trying to find out the act, the, the actress, the girl. And she's like, oh. The one that, the, the, the weird doll looking girl? Yes, and she's on the posters. Super creepy. I couldn't, I mean, she's like, you know, 15th down on the cast. Like, and she only did one other thing. She was so cute. This whole she cowboy guy. Her voice creeped me out. Like that weird, like little girl, like. Yeah, ooh. like 1920s. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like yeah. vibrating of the voice and like, I don't know, yeah. really the high pitched. Um, look at this backdrop. Yeah, this was cool. I really like the backdrop on this. Yeah, I like this set. I wasn't in the Cowboys, but again, another massive set. And then oh, this gets into the finale, right? This is like the finale. Yeah, I was kind of like kind of oddly creeped out because I feel like Hitler watched this and it became like yes, well, very third, right? Like or the dictator, like um, Charlie Chaplin, the dictator. Uh, it was, yeah, it is. I know it was supposed to be going throughout like the world, but it just kind of this whole vibe. <laughs> yeah, with the pillars and the oh, and then yeah, and then why are they all in trench coats with the violins? I don't know. Yeah, this was like a worldly dance of. I mean, the costumes uh, just. I I don't even. So many costumes. So many costumes. And then there was this weird smoke thing going on. That yeah, I that was like very um, like Wizard of Oz to me. But again, with the weird, I was like, how did they do that then? Yeah, I I think you're right. There was like this like light loop thing that was happening. Like a technique of overlay. Yeah, it's almost like animation on the screen. I wonder if he did the production designer did the animation. Oh, I don't know. I can look that up, but. And this set just keeps building and building upon itself. And there's so many it, elements. I don't even know at that point. I mean, I guess you're just drawing and drawing and drawing for a very long time and then presenting. But to get all of this like hand drafted and presentable to people to understand, to, you know, walk through it with the director. I And they had what? It was this the one? This is four months. Four months. The cinematographer, they had three different cinematographers them, right? on it. So maybe they were shooting at different times or. And different cameras or something. Yeah. I mean, I that a lot of like, you know, all three wall. That's the whole stage right there. Yeah. I mean, the, I don't know, look, I don't even know if stage 12 is still there. How high is it? And how far back you got to get to get all this. That's awesome. This is uh, another p page of the book. 
I don't know if that's curtain. Gotta be some sort of canvas. Yeah. But, uh. And then <laughs> there's the guy. There's the king of jazz. Thought I'd show him. Because this is one of I the... Like when, I like when he... They cut to some... Oh, you cut out. Wait, what'd you say? Uh -oh. A fat suit or something. Oh, yeah. And then the mustache off because it's not him. Yeah. It's... it's weird. But yeah, King of Jazz, man. Wow. Everybody should watch this movie. Everyone should watch this. And how many times people have watched it and taken from it? Probably a million. I mean, it's... You can't, you can't not steal from this film if you're doing... Probably in the 40s and 50s, they were referring to it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Although you can't go back and watch things then. So if you didn't catch it, <laughs> you know. If you You're out of luck. It, yeah, if you missed it, um, you know. Um, Hans uh, Dreer again. That guy. Dreer? Do you think that's Dreer? Dreer? Probably Dreer. Dreer. Um... Yeah, this guy was this guy was busy. The um This also had to have been shot some locations in Yes. Paris. And then on stage. I believe so. Yeah, because they have that big courtyard and everything. The Queen mm -hmm. of Mythical Sylvania marries a courier who finds his new life unsatisfying. You believe the balls on this guy? He finds. He, he, I can't believe the. Oh, I can and can't believe the ending. I yeah yeah. So this I budget, like, the, the budget is six hundred fifty thousand, mm -hmm. and um, I mean it says just Paramount Studios, but there's no way this. It's not. No, all. they had to have shot on location in the beginning. Yeah, it's not all a build. No. So this is wrong. And but again, then, these are other massive. This is another example of the doorknobs up by your forehead. Yeah. Despite being the most nominated film of the year with six nominations, it is the only Best Picture Oscar nominee that year not to win any awards. Um, oh. Considered by many to be the first musical film in which the songs were integrated with the story. Oh. So that's interesting. And then these posters are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love her bedroom. Her bedroom's great. So she's a queen. Now, obviously, we start off with this fantastic little dance scene in, you know, bubbly in Paris. And I was like, oh, look at what's going on here. And uh, that's the only time anything like this is in the film, though. Right. Which I was, then I'm kind of glad because uh, you know, I'm not big on musicals, but. <laughs> this is... Yeah, especially after the King of Jazz where you're, yeah. you're just. <laughs> Two, yeah, hour, an hour and a half of musicals. Yeah. Um, look at the, I, I mean, love the wallpaper, wallpaper on this one. I know wallpaper and the drapery. Mm -hmm. Wallpaper and, and drapery just on a wall. Mm -hmm. And no, uh, no pictures. It's really kind of plain. I mean, they really just let the wallpaper be be the I, the draw. I love that. Yeah. I always want to. You know, I like minimalist mm. sets. I know it's not always super fun for people filming it, but. This also, too, like, they have candles and they have bulbs. <laughs> they couldn't make up their mind, I feel like, in this film. Are we candle it or are we bulbs? It's back and forth. Um, but there, this scene, this has to be a build. And yeah. this is, it's only in the, it's only there for, like, one minute. Like, the guy goes out to sing a song about I'm lonely. And then there's all these women. <laughs> coming out the window telling them like don't be lonely or something <laughs> um but it, it's hard to see <laughs> in these mm -hmm. films but i thought this was really interesting and the shadows and really nice no i love it and it's simplicity it's really beautiful oh my gosh look at her bed oh so the <laughs> queen's bedroom <laughs> is just phenomenal it's so crazy and the detail work like the carpentry about of that or the plaster work or i'm assuming plus i don't know what that is but i i i don't know i don't know if i think it's probably a mixture of both yeah 
plaster the, and wood. And the drapery and like there's just the ornateness of of it. It's just fantastic. So many different like satiny textures and furs and I thought it was kind of risque to like her her going into the tub scene. Oh my god, like, the tub is weird. This scene she goes into the tub yeah. with like her maidens and then they're like bathing her. It was super weird. But look at the yeah, ducks. I thought that, but when she was getting in, again, the quality's not super great. But I was like, does she did they make her wear nylons to get into the to get into um, the bath? Because it's so inappropriate for her to be naked at that time. Yeah. I didn't get and her it legs either. look oddly like there's nylons on. Probably. They probably made her wear them just for camera. Mm. To give her some, maybe she was too pale. I don't know, but it's a weird, uh, you know, two minute scene of her like bathing with all these women. And then and talking about her weird sex dream or whatever she had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, a kill for this vanity, though. Look at this. I mean, <laughs> you know, all your bottles and your mirrors and your. Oh, it's just so funny. Um, Look at the bathtub, though. The oh, bathtub is crazy. I mean, that's a um, build. Yeah. That's like in the dove, the birds, and all the drapery, and yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's too, I mean, the two sidedness of it is great, but yet it has walls near it. I don't know. It's weird. Beautiful. And then this picture oh. is just like them dressing the queen and. A photo still of try of like a promo. I don't. I don't even know. What do Look we, at all that's in there. What are we promoting here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, very ornate. This is her, like one of her outer rooms, like her office room, and just gorgeous. She's like, look at my legs. Yeah. Look at look at this one. <laughs> just. Uh, but subtle, like all the details on the doors and, but there's, again, there's no artwork. No artwork. Uh, I mean, there's so much ornateness to the set, but yet the walls are, you know, it looks like there's movement in there. I can't tell right now from this if there was wallpaper on this one, but the scenic work is amazing. Yeah. And the drapery work, drapery giving everything some life. Look at the, the layers in the top left over here. Yeah. And that's just a little nook. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a nook of her bedroom. But that's, uh, is that where her bed is? I don't know. Because there's the vanity. I can't tell. I didn't. Or I think, isn't this through the curtains or whatever that's off in right, her bedroom? Right. Secret. There's a, there's a lot of singing in this. <laughs> there's a lot of singing in this. There's a lot of singing in this. And I guess the singing tells the story, as they said, it's the first musical with the integrated story in the songs. But there's your, there's our first picture back there, probably like the queen before her, a couple queens before her. <laughs> um, the use of like the satin and pillows and more, more gorgeous drapery. I mean, this is a draper's dream here. Look at, and then look at the wallpaper in the left just the the stripes the two-tone stripes gorgeous and it's got some satiny reflection in it too it's really yeah. pretty yeah maybe it's just a glossy this it's, set this location. can't be <laughs> this has to be a location well, right I, yeah i can't imagine it has to be there's no way that this was a build i can't i I can't. This can't be. This has to be a location. They're gorgeous. And I'm sure they took a lot of this into consideration when doing the sets. Like all of this mm -hmm. design and everything and inspiring. But yeah, they get married. Beautiful. Again, the drapery. And, and Look at the big, I mean, that last photo, the big wide, wide shot. Yeah, and all the extras and, I don't know. And then, I mean, although ornate, you, you're right, everything's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Nothing extravagant going on. I mean, and then this is exterior. This has to be a location. 
Somewhere. Somewhere. Not I in, wonder where, though. Not in L.A. Definitely not in L.A. I've never seen anything like that. And then you get the gardens, and there's a little set there. <laughs> there's a lot in these... Uh, What's the other film? The um, the love, um, no Sally. There's so many greens. In the one. There's a lot of greens. There's a on. lot of greens in Sally. <laughs> a lot of greens, in Sally. But this isn't that bad compared to Sally. I mean, the the vines around the columns and da, 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 like it's a lot. But when I actually the one note I remember I wrote down for this, uh, I felt like I was watching season one of The Crown. Hmm. Yeah. Because the story is like essentially the same thing. Yeah. She's trying to find her prince. And then he's like, I don't want to, what? I'm not the, yeah. I can't rule. Yeah. I can't, I have no say in anything. It's like, no. <laughs> no, just sit down and like, shut that up. That storyline reminds me of something. Yeah. Real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, the difference down here in the servants' quarters, I thought was a nice contrast. and But still mm. getting some details on those walls with that arch and the checker right. floor. and But it's still really sparse, but it reads. Mm -hmm. And their um, shelving is at the proper height. Yeah, they could reach those dishes. That's yeah. nice. Um, and then there's another giant. Is this where she goes to the theater? Yet? Yeah, no. This is um, just a net look at the wallpaper on those doors. Perfect. I was wondering if that was fabric or wallpaper. Oh, maybe. Fabric. Maybe fabric, yeah. Look at all that detail work. This has to be a location. Yeah, for sure. This, this was like such a ridiculous scene as well, like yeah, to make her jealous. <laughs> and then this is the hallway of her walking into the theater, right? <laughs> like it's like this is. Where is this? I want to know. It's gorgeous. Yeah. But it also looks like a set, which is so crazy. Yeah, it yeah, it does. Like like the top is a painted you know how they would paint some of the scenery and then put it I don't know. It does. It does look like a set, but it's I mean the the stairs are real. She walks down the stairs. Yeah. And then I, I think the box is a build. Mm. Well, right. Maybe, maybe not, because then look, there's the back of it, which I love this detail of, um, like the the box, the wall having that trim and the fabric. Really pretty. Yeah. There's so many pretty details in this. I think. I mean, I they would have to, right? How else would they? How did they shoot that? Gotten up there, you know, to get that shot that you have on the top left. That has to be a build. I think it's a build, and maybe just the reverse was the location. Right. They were so smart in 29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, the stage. There's other films that I've watched where all of a sudden, like, they go, they keep going to the theater, and there's such intricate theater design all of a sudden in the middle of a movie, and you're like, oh, my God, they had to do it. Like, Elephant Man is crazy when he goes to the theater really? oh my god there's like this whole play that goes on and the scenery is fantastic but this is like at least they got this shot though looking down they had to, i mean it has to be a location yeah um and there she is coming down those stairs again and i don't know that's why i feel like this was like a build but that maybe they spent all their money not all their money but a large majority of their money doing this you know, like in um, in Gone with the Wind, how like the the um, on Twelve Oaks or is it Twelve Oaks or Tara? Like the ceiling is painted. It's mm -hmm. not really a set. Like maybe they did that here. Right. Yeah, maybe maybe this is a build. That's fuck. That's crazy. <laughs> Like you have like, here's your chunk of money. We just need one big build. But they didn't have that much money on this, right? Did I say? That was like six something, right? Six fifty? Six hundred. Maybe they reused a set from another movie. Yeah. They um no. They only shot for a month. June to July. They had But what was their prep time? Well, I don't know their prep time. 
Come on, Kim. <laughs> Don't you have their call sheets? These people too? are dead. <laughs> <Can't answer. laughs> um, I, I I enjoyed this movie. I I might have fast forward through some of the songs, but I did enjoy this movie. And this dude like walks away from it all. Spoiler. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it until the end. Until she's like, "I'll give it all up." And you can make all the decisions. <laughs> it's like, I what? Not, I thought he walked out. No, he he did until she's like, they go back to the beginning part where it's like, I'll just be by, my punishment is I'll be by your side and I'll blah, blah, blah. And so she, that's what she does. They like reiterate the first kind of scene when she meets him as her punishment. Punish? She's like, I'll just be by your side and I'll let you make all the decisions. And and then they're like, rah, rah, okay. And it's like, oh, happy ending because the man is now the one in control. And I was like, so you just gave away your kingdom to this guy to oh, make all the decisions? I thought he had a hissy fit and she was like, oh, sorry, this is the life. <laughs> no, oh, no, he, uh, well, I, maybe, I'm no. Kid. I mean, that's not how I took it. She was like, no, I'll be by your side and you can make all the decisions now. And he's like, okay. Well, that's bullshit. You believe me. In watching a lot of movies, <laughs> the w- women always get the shaft. <laughs> like basically, in the older movies, nah, it's not happening, yeah. ladies. It's not happening. Look at this Sally. This poor thing. <laughs> oh my god! But you know what I found interesting in Sally is that Sally Bowles Green, and then it just says Sally Bowles, is the same as Sally Bowles in Cabaret name. Oh. That is where I, what I connected, and they're kind of similar in character. Oh, that's you know, true. Like yeah, whitey and oh, like, yeah, yeah. So Sally was an orphan who got her name from a telephone exchange where she was abandoned as a baby. In the orphanage, at the Bowling Green <laughs> telephone exchange. <laughs> in the orphanage, she discovered the joy of dancing, and has been practicing ever since. She works as a waitress, and then becomes um, involved with like a scheme to impersonate someone she impersonate a russian dancer um she is found out to be a phony and um but then she proceeds with her life and on broadway but she still thinks of blair the the love interest (laughs) um Mm -hmm. this uh production designer jack oakey where is it um well, let me get to him. That the fourth all color, all talking picture ever made, originally presented in one hundred percent two color Technicolor. Um, at present, the complete film survives only in black and white, with a singular musical number, Wild Rose, in color. So I thought I was stroking out at that point. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I thought I was watching a black and white movie, and now everything is like a weird pink color. It is jarring, because all of a sudden it's color, and you're like, well, did my thing Uh, flip over? Yeah. I almost texted you, like, um. (laughs) I thought it was a sweet little story. Um, Oh, for sure. Yeah. It was very, uh, yeah, it was cute. And um, a lot of singing. A lot of singing, Bigger sets, like the opening with the restaurant. Yeah. This, uh, the production designer also was the art director on It's a Wonderful Life, um, Hmm. Out of the Past. Um, Yeah. He, uh, I can't ask him anything. He died in 1963, Jane. Uh, No call sheets. Uh, um, Yeah, this diner was fantastic that she works Mm -hmm. in. This is the, all the lights, and then that, um, what is that called at the top of the window? Tra- tra- transom? Transom, yeah. I thought that was a great detail, and then they had to do this whole kitchen, which is... I like the moving cars and stuff outside. Yeah. The foot traffic. The rotating door. Yeah, this is a good set. And then... This Elm Tree Inn is kind of like a country club, I guess. Which I'm assuming that's a build. The the, the stairs. Yeah. Um, little conversation spot. And then there's just this outside. <laughs> like a, it's like an outdoor um, dinner club or something. 
Yeah, I was very confused by it, especially when he has the guy climb up into the treehouse. Tree house, yeah. Like, thing. Yeah, I don't... Mm. It was says, Again, this also this reminded me of um, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. Oh, I can A see lot. that. This budget was six hundred and forty-seven thousand, and um, it doesn't say how long it filmed for. It was says filming location uh, Warner Brothers lot, but hmm. this uh, I could see this is a set. I mean, this isn't. This is a build inside with just tons and tons of greens, making it look right. like a little tree house. And it, there's no, really, other than the greens, there's no ceiling, it seems, to it either. Yeah. I had to take, I mean, these are all screenshots mm -hmm. and from, like, my TV. Like, there's, it's, <laughs> I, had, I had to shoot and watch at the same time. But, yeah, that tree house is very interesting because there's a whole scene up there. So, they had to get the cameras up there and everything. Um, yeah, that goes up the ladder. Yeah. And then this little vignette again, little trellis, little intimate space where they have some conversations and that big tree trunk there. And the growth between the, the floor, the, the um, stone. Yeah, I had to fast forward through the guys singing. Yeah, I know. With okay. his buddies. Yeah. Sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then... The stage that they have a couple dance and and singing um, pieces on, you know, she's cleaning up. Like, it's very versatile What how they use the, the little stage space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, clear all those tables out and you still have the same thing. Yeah. And then I guess the, the entrance was a build. They just put a car, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love when he picks her up out of the car and carries her over to the stone wall. I was yeah. like, why doesn't he ever pick me up out yeah. of the car and carry me? I mean, just carry me. <laughs> <laughs> My boys say carry me and I do it. Why can't somebody else carry me? <laughs> they have a lovely little song and kiss on the little stone. And um, it looks like a little cherry tree or whatever. They really, <laughs> there's so oh. many trees. I mean, oh, yeah. there we go. this is like, I mean... You're in a forest. You're in. You're in Wizard that was of Oz. A lot of big greens budget on this one. Yeah, and they did a great job on it. I mean, they did. It looks great. The aging of the all and like, yeah. Um. And then uh, I don't know where we are here, but I love the fringe on this table. <laughs> the detail of that is fantastic. They're at some other country club or house, the rich people house. Yeah, I thought they were at her house. Where they just have a wall of greens and like a Roman statue. <laughs> Nothing says money like yeah. a wall of greens and a Roman statue. Corinthian columns and a Roman statue. That, but I was also wondering, is that the same? So the, the chick on the right, is that who he was supposed to be engaged to? But yeah. then doesn't he just kind of disappear in the movie? Yeah, she just kind of is like, oh, he's in, he's in love with her. And so then she's she, fine with it. She's yeah. like, oh, because here the mom's telling her he's back in town or whatever. Mm -hmm. So then Sally. I love the back stage. Yeah. For the dressing room. I love that. Sally gets tapped to impersonate after she does like this dance. They finally give her a shot. She does a dance at the club. And then they tap her to like impersonate this Russian woman. But yeah, I love, I love dressing rooms. I love mm -hmm. like the Miss Maisel dressing room is like the absolute perfect thing, I think, at this point. But you look back at like Funny Girl or, you know, um, G mm -hmm. Gigi or whatever. Like they all just, the dressing rooms are always fantastic. So fun. Because it's such a great place for set decorators to have yeah. fun. Yeah, and layer character, yeah, and, and tapping into actors' process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now this Boy. this is a build, right? This is it's got to be. Well, this is the main shot, and then mm -hmm. this is looking back. So, I think it's a build though because they have this huge dance. They have a couple dance numbers here. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And the then, whole, oh, not the whole, but a, a large portion, uh, I feel like, of the main part of the movie happens here. So I bet it yeah. was a build. Yeah, I think it's a build. Um, um, but see, look at all that detail. Fountain. I mean, there's running water. There's, um, I mean, the lighting. Yeah. And there's sides. I mean, it's it's a full set. I mean, they greened out the sides, I guess. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Probably a lot of topiaries. And then it turns into color. <laughs> That's what we we're Sorry. saying. But look at the uh, reflection too that you get off of that, uh, mm -hmm. just to extend the set a little bit. And it's a really it's a nice little dance number. And, and then when you see it in color, you're like, oh. This is crazy. I mean, it does look pink, which is probably white, but yeah, I don't, it got because there's only three colors here, too. You know, it's the tricolor, whatever it's called. Yeah, I think that's a build. And then this, she goes back to her fancy bedroom, which looks kind of wants to be the bedroom in uh, Love Story. Yeah. Or what was it? Um, this was uh, when she goes parade. out to the balcony. Yeah. Love parade. <laughs> yeah. Not quite as ornate as love parade. No. But. Definitely not. This but headpiece was fantastic. Yeah, agreed. Oof. And then they take her over to this private little area to have a conversation. And it's just green. It's just a forest back there. It's. Uh, cause this is only used, this isn't like another. No, they only use this, I think once. Yeah. It's a huge green set. And then she's found out and she goes back to like her little, her little apartment. I can't tell if this was her apartment or just like a waiting space. I think it's her apartment. It's sad. <laughs> Look at that one little picture, like. This was another moment where I was like, if she gives up, because they're like, you got it, you got the, you're on the follies or whatever. And she's like, but all upset about her boyfriend. And I'm like, if she gives up her life's dream. For that dude. Well, she had the other guy, that other actor who I only know from um, Some Like It Hot. Remember, he's like the rich guy that Tony Curtis ends up with on the boat. That's her pal in this. Oh, the, the, what was he, a duke or something? Yeah. This is fantastic. She goes, again, they go mm. to the theater, and she's in the theater. She's performing, but this is stage design again. <laughs> they used all the trees again. The great usage. And the costumes were really pretty. Yeah. A lot of butterflies. Really pretty. Uh, that... I don't think, I I don't think that's a build, like the actual theater. Yeah, why wouldn't you just go to a theater? I feel like they should have gone to a. Th I think they went to a theater, and then this guy with all the roses and taking the cards <laughs> out and like. <laughs> but a great little use back there of this changing area, where she has. I like the, it. Yeah. yeah, it's but, really pretty with the fabric and the, the cutout. Yeah. And Very deco. Little, little shades. Screen. Yeah. It's a beautiful little scene that they have there. And then they get married. Now this, I don't know. Is I was looking at this last night and I was wondering, it's got to be a location, right? Look at the depth on the inside. Yeah. That's what I'm sure easy. you could have a painted backdrop, but that doesn't look like a painted backdrop. No, there's too many shadows. Mm. It's too... I feel like it has to be a location. I think I would say so. You but. know, the other thing too is though, not, I mean, they're, they're just getting stock scenery together, I think. But later on, there's so many walls that are used so many other places. I mean, maybe, but That's I, true. I don't know this early on if they would have this. Or because maybe because they had deals with studios that are like, oh, on my last picture, I did a church and we built it. So we'll just bring that over. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> but it's great. I mean, it's a great little scene. I liked Sally. I yeah, know, I liked it. Was it. I, it was the, I feel like, again, it was cabaret. Yeah. Um, Vagabond King is last. Production desire. <laughs> It's drier. Now this. I can't like. I, I mean, I can't even really talk about this because I couldn't see anything. I know these pictures are very dark. I could bear. There's uh, well, the beginning of the movie is dark, and the end of the movie is dark, and there's a little bit in between that is actually visible. Visible. This it has not been restored. It was very hard to see. Um, it also like in the stuff that I could see it, like especially. I, what was the budget on this one? Do you have that? Uh, I do. Look at these. These are great, though. Vagabond King, one one point two million. Really? <laughs> that surprises me because I feel like the lanterns and stuff look like paper made out of like cardboard and paper. Yeah. And then this says just filmed at Paramount, and um, it doesn't have uh, shooting dates of how long. Well, I mean, there was, you know, from what I could tell, a lot of like. The scenery looked brick and, yeah, you know, it looks, looks like a, a lot of detail to it. So, yeah, from what I could see. So this is the 500 extras uh, worked on the film. Mm. I mean, it's it, these are very blurry, but I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't know if these are <laughs> sets. I don't know. This was hard to track. It's hard to um it's super blurry she has she's got a great little bed there oh that's close um i don't know there's just a lot of detail lost because of the quality of the film but it looks it's kind of like this juliet of at the at the window over here again a lot of greens i love this one shot that looked like like the guy was looking through a telescope Mm -hmm. And you could, I thought that was super interesting that they did that. And, um, I mean, again, like with the use of shadows and it, it's, it is, you know, pretty, it does because of what it, the, um, quality of the film, it does look like a water, like you're watching a constant black and white watercolor. Yeah. And this, um, Hans Dreyer did, um, art director on Sunset Boulevard uh, Double Indemnity, Sullivan's Travels. He, I mean, he was around a long time. That's too bad. I wish they would he is make this better. 550 art director credits. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at that huge head that's carved out. Like, this is like they go down. This is like they go down to where the ships are. Like the dock, this is kind of like the dock area, would you say? Oh, I didn't do the synopsis of this movie, duh. Uh, the story takes place in medieval France, post-rogue Francois Villon, sentenced to hang by King Louis for writing derogatory verses about him. He is offered a temporary reprieve. His hanging will be postponed for 24 hours, and in that time he must defeat the invading uh, Bul Bulgarians, and win the love of uh, beautiful Catherine. He's got a lot to do in 24 hours. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. They're down by the ships. It's it's very hard to keep track of what's going on in this movie. But some of these it are sets. It looks like the sets are beautiful. I just, it's so... Yeah. I mean, no. even my pictures suck because... I'm no, it's it's trying to take pictures of like what I actually could see. Um, I mean, there is this beautiful bedroom. They put him up in this beautiful bedroom with the two doors flanking it, and they go in and out with like his clothes. And they try. He gets in this reprieve. He gets uh, fixed up. He looks a little better. They let him sleep. Because he was down and dirty at the docks. And then they brought him to like, the castle. And made him mm. like Prince Valiant here. Yeah, I mean, that detail is amazing. Look at that. Yeah. So and the pretty. gates. And and then this turns color. There's... It looks like 1970s. 
Yeah, there's a scene where she's singing and this turns color. Just for like one minute. But this too was huge. This These big arches and this staircase. I, I want to know the timeline, the prep time on these. <laughs> oh, and then there's this weird parade with those big hats. And then mobs of people. I don't know. It's, uh, I know it's super blurry to talk about. I think, um, I think there were a lot of sets in this too. I mean, 1.2 million, they had some money. I wonder, I mean, I guess maybe just cause, you know, King of Jazz won because of the variety of sets. Yeah. And then this was just, all the other movies are just so typical movie movie sets and it didn't go through all sorts of genres and it was just incredibly I mean the piano alone yeah the piano I mean <laughs> yeah should have won the award I couldn't even find many details about this movie so yeah I mean there's a lot going on but you couldn't see it because of the quality yeah. of the film and you know he did 500 yeah. Oh, he was okay. If he had one, I mean, at he, least it was nominated. He oversaw. You know, it's like this this studio system at that point where there was mm -hmm. just one guy overseeing all this, and it, it it happens all through up until like the I think the seventies. Mm. Great year. Yeah, it was. I was really um I'm happy I picked this year. Yeah, I mean, and they're all pretty different i mean the, there's some musicals obviously but they're like they're all pretty different i mean one's showing the city one's showing the grandness of the queen one's just pure like a variety special there's some suspense it, it shows all of it yeah it has it shows... literally has almost a set from each one of the other films in it yeah <laughs> i mean king of jazz Wow. King of Jazz. I, I told Heath, I was like, I feel like I'm watching a young American variety show. Yeah. There's so much. It just, like, and then it's just gone. And then you're on to the next thing. And then it's just gone. And then. It just kept going and going. And going. Yeah. But yeah, great year. And, and I think people have, you know, taken from these films and, and been inspired from them. So I'm glad. Oh, I definitely. Definitely glad I got to watch them. There's I'm, a lot of connection here, and I'm interested to see more in this time period to see what, how it shows itself later on in other in yeah. I recent. I mean, I definitely think King King of Jazz has been knocked off here and there. Mm. That's what's so incredible. Like, I know that there was theater design before this, but like this is the first wave. And it's so fantastic to see what they accomplished. Right. I mean, the it, the stage pieces and the movingness of it all at that point. And it's not like you saw a person pulling, you know, dressed in all black, pulling the sets apart. It yeah. was. No, it was great. Really great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks for including me in this. It was um, really fun and interesting. I, and inspiring. You know, I always love going back to look at old films. I love, um, I, I really love doing this probably way too much. Like, I think I have 12 years done now. <laughs>